Hey there gang, Patrick King here coming to you live from, hmm, I think I'm in Danville, Virginia. <laughs> one town, one hotel after another for me. Anyway, today's question is coming to us from Brianna. Brianna asked this question in our uh, uh, private Patrick King Horsemanship discussion group. Uh, and I'll make sure that I post a link for that. You're, you're all uh, encouraged to join that. You just have to request to become a member. And we're pretty much letting everybody in on that. So anyway, <clears throat> a lot of great discussions going on in that group as well. So Brianna's question. I started an older mare in a Bosal last year. I then switched to a bit. I switched back to a Bosal because that seemed to be what she prefers. And now I'm putting kids on her to help them learn to ride. Is a Bosal as harsh as some say? It does have leverage, but the mare seems content in it. Should you be a skilled rider to use a Bosal, or can, should, kids uh, who are learning ride in one? Am I compromising my horse in any way by using a Bosal for beginners? So uh, this is another one of those questions that I want to kind of break up into a couple different segments. So first off, I love uh, by the tone of this message, by the tone of this question, that Brianna is really trying to listen to her horse. The horse was happier in the Bosal or in the Hackamore than she was in the bit. So uh, hopefully we've got uh, any potential dental issues uh, already looked at. Uh, but she put her back into the Hackamore because she said she's happier in that than the bit. So that's that's great. I'm, I'm uh, always recommending we listen to our horses. Our horses tell us what they like and they tell us what's working. So uh, want to get into a little discussion about this idea of the Bosal. Uh, or particularly in this case, uh, the Hackamore. So when we talk about the Bosal, actually I've got one here. When we talk about the Bosal, it's basically just the nose piece. We add a hanger to the nose piece and then we'll add reins and the entire getup becomes a Hackamore. Uh, so when we talk about riding a horse, uh, in a setup like this, we're riding in the Hackamore if it's a complete setup. Now there are some riders that prefer to put a Fiador that attaches um, to the base of the Bosal, to the knot down here, and comes up basically acting as a throat latch to keep this in a steady balance uh, for the horse. Some people prefer to ride in those, some people don't. Um, if you want to look up more information on that, Google's a great resource for that. You can find more information. Um, that's Fiador, not Theodore. You'll just get the chipmunks if you look up that. Um, F-I-A-D-O-R, Fiador is what that piece is called. So anyway, um, so the Bosal, the nose piece, with the hanger, with the Makate, um, with or without the Fiador, that whole setup is referred to as the Hackamore. So, uh, so uh, Brianna mentioned in her question about leverage. That's something that I want to kind of uh, help clarify a little bit. When the reins are on the Bosal, making it the Hackamore, there is a shift in the Hackamore, and ideally, our horse learns to work within the balance of the Hackamore. It's less about leverage and more about balance, okay? When we're talking about leverage, we're more talking about the idea of compound pressure. So if we think about, uh, say, a, a ported bit, a curb bit, uh, not a ported bit, but a, a, a curb bit with shanks on it. Uh, that bit, based on the measurement of the purchase, the piece above the mouthpiece, and the shank, the piece below the mouthpiece, that becomes a, a tool with leverage uh, because it transfers, it changes the amount of pressure that we put on the reins. Depending on how the reins are set up, it's pretty common to have kind of a one to seven ratio where uh, you pick up on the rein, say, with one pound and you get about seven pounds of pressure as it circulates uh, onto the mouthpiece because of the length of the shanks. Uh, so that's, it's a three point 
pressure system, you know, when we've got that shank bit, puts pressure on the bars of the mouth, puts pressure with the chin strap, circulates pressure to the pole, and then recirculates again. That's how we end up with a leverage piece, okay? So the hackamore, I would put in the argument that the hackamore is not necessarily a leverage piece because that circulation doesn't happen. When we're using this based off of the balance, uh, it, it's just the pressure, it's a direct pressure. It, it, there's as much leverage in this as there is in a halter, really. Um, and the word hackamore, uh, as we use it, actually comes from the word hakima, which translates to headstall or halter. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea about the, the tradition of that and how that has come to be. This was um, just as much originally for leading the horse around and that sort of thing uh, as it translates to halter. So, uh, so kind of clearing that up. So the leverage idea, Brianna, don't worry. It's, it's not really a leverage piece uh, in the way that we talk about leverage equipment with our horse. Uh, looking back over your question also, um, so is it as harsh as some people say? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I've always uh, been very careful riding in a hackamore because a horse can kind of learn that it's just a bluff uh, because basically you're on the outside of their nose with you know a pretty thick piece of rawhide uh, or braided rawhide uh, and you know, the horse can easily learn to push in that, into that or push through that. So is it harsh? Well, you know, it's rawhide, it's braided, sometimes they're bulky depending on the thickness of them. So you could get to banging one around if it's not fitting right in the first place, if it's too loose and it's slopping around, you could bang one around on your horse. Uh, and it's pretty common in that case to see uh, horses with rub marks on their chin and that sort of thing. Uh, but is it harsh? Uh, you know, I, I don't believe so. Uh, and based on the tone of your question anyway, chances are you're not going to be allowing those kids that are riding your horse and learning to be getting harsh with the Bosal, with the Hackamore anyway. So, uh, so I'm, I'm putting some faith in you to, to say that you're probably going to keep your horse safe in that situation. Now that's going to lead me into the next piece of your question. Should kids or should beginners learn to ride in a hackamore or in a bosal? Um, I think they should. Uh, it'll teach them a great way to use their hands, uh, particularly if you're there to guide them. I think everyone should learn to ride in equipment like this because it helps us to focus primarily on developing our seat. Uh, going to the beginner, beginner riders, I don't think they should be riding with headgear at all. I think they should be riding on the lunge line for six, eight months, a year, 18 months, you know, as long as it takes for them to develop their seat and an understanding of what needs to happen, uh, then they're in a place where they're better educated uh, and better prepared to take the reins regardless of what the equipment is that the horse is wearing on their head. So uh, that's going to take me into the final piece of your question, Brianna. Uh, am, I comp am I compromising my horse in any way by using a Bose Hall, using a Hackamore, uh, for beginners? I don't think so. Um, because again, if you're there teaching, based on the tone of your question already, you're going to be keeping your eyes out for your horse's welfare and best interests first. So uh, I don't think you're doing any harm. So the Hackamore, it's not really a, a leverage tool, um, just based on the natural function of it. It's not necessarily harsh. It can be used harshly, just like any tool can be. Uh, but by design, it is not necessarily harsh, and you're certainly not compromising your horse by riding her in the hackamore and by having your students ride her in the hackamore. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, hopefully that's helpful to anybody who might be tuning in. If you're interested in riding in a hackamore, it's a fantastic tool. It's one of my favorite tools for developing the lightness, softness, self-carriage, balance, in a horse, younger horses, or older horses, just as Brianna was talking about here in her question.
So that's going to lead me to the question of the day for all of you. Question of the day today. What is your favorite type of gear to be riding your horse in? I'm really curious to hear what you have to say, okay? What's your favorite type of gear to be riding your horse in? Post your answers in the comment section below on this video. Please take a moment to send us some likes, share us some love on the videos here, let us know what you're thinking, and also, just as Brianna did, you can send your questions in. You can do that through private message. You can do that below in the comment section of this video. We've had a lot of questions coming in through our private Facebook discussion group, so I encourage you to hunt for that. You can put that into the Facebook search. Uh, that'll come up under the groups, Patrick King Horsemanship. Uh, send us a message, send us a text, you know, any way that you want to, any question you want to ask, anything you're curious about, you keep asking questions. I'll keep making videos and answering them. Thanks so much, gang.